What's up, what's up? Welcome back to the Rat Cave. It's Rat C for DJ Kit. It's been a little while since I've been able to do a proper Rat Cave video for you all, but I am here today with some very, very exciting news from Pioneer DJ. Check out the brand spanking new, just been announced. It's the DDJ FLX4 or Flex4, to be honest, I'm not really sure which way you're supposed to call it, but here it is in all of its glory. I'm so, so excited about this. So I am gonna be taking a first look at it, but just to say, this is a, actually a sample unit right here and it is connected to beta um, software. So obviously I am filming this video before release. On release, when all of the software is completely unbeated and I've got a proper unit in front of me, I'll be delving a little bit deeper into some of the features. But just for a first exclusive first look today, let's get into it. So speaking of software, we saw this on the DDJ FLX6. This DDJ FLX4 is compatible with both Rekordbox and Serato. This for me is such, such good news because it gives people, maybe beginner DJs who, you know, this controller is sort of aimed at, it gives them the opportunity to play on both, arguably the two best sort of DJ softwares on the market. That might uh, cause some trouble in the comments section. But um, but yeah, so this is compatible with both Rekordbox and Serato. Um, I am using this with Rekordbox today, but it will be compatible with Serato on launch. That compatibility with Serato, it is obviously compatible with Serato DJ Pro, but you do have to obviously pay for DJ Pro. But fresh out the box, this is plug and play with Rekordbox and Serato DJ Lite. Speaking of plug and play as well, this is completely class compliant, so no need to download any drivers. You just either plug it into your Mac or your Windows or whatever, and uh, it will work straight away. Now, speaking of compatible devices, this DDJ FLX4 has got Bluetooth MIDI built into it. So what that is, we saw it on, of course, the Pioneer DDJ200. It means that you can connect this thing completely wirelessly to Android or iOS devices. And a little birdie has told me, I say a little birdie, quite a strong source has told me that going hand in hand with this Bluetooth compatibility, we are going to be seeing a brand new record box app for iOS and for Android coming in 2023. So that is super exciting. Um, obviously, if you know how the DDJ200 works in terms of uh, connecting the controller with um, your, um, your tablet or your phone or whatever you're using it with, it will work the same way. So of course, the beauty of having Bluetooth built into a DJ controller is that you can connect it to Bluetooth speakers or Bluetooth headphones. I mean, along the Pioneer DJ range, you know, we've seen the new um, Bluetooth DM40s, the Q1 headphones are obviously Bluetooth, and this DDJ FLX4 is actually Bluetooth LE, or LE Bluetooth, should I say. And what LE Bluetooth is, the LE stands for low energy, um, but it basically enhances the performance in terms of power consumption. Um, it's got smaller latency and bandwidth. So as I said, uh, we are expecting the updated app from Pioneer DJ or Rekordbox DJ, should I say, in 2023. So once that is released, I will of course talk you through all of the features and all of the benefits of using Bluetooth with that app. Um, but for today, I've got this hardwired into Rekordbox. So actually, good time to say, um, the way that I do have this hardwired into Rekordbox DJ here on this Mac, on the DDJ FLX4, the USB connection is USB-C. So, um, it comes with the USB-C to C cable. Obviously, going forward, I mean, you know, at least all the new MacBooks and stuff like that is all USB-C. Um, so forward thinking connection here from Pioneer DJ. Should say as well at this point that this controller is completely bus powered. What that means is that it is powered by the battery on your laptop. So um, you don't actually even have to have your laptop or your Mac or whatever plugged into power. It rolls off of the um, battery on the device itself. Obviously, I would always recommend to have uh, your laptop plugged into power because you don't want to run out of battery in the middle of a set. 
So there is actually two USB-C ports on the back of this controller. That is to connect one into the device, but then also this DDJ FLX4 can be powered by a battery pack, which you obviously plug into the other USB-C port on the back. Right, so let's actually have a look at the controller itself. So, I mean, at first glance, it does kind of look like the DDJ400. And I mean, you know, with the name FLX4, this has now replaced the DDJ400, it's pretty obvious. Um, just to say actually at this point, I will be doing a head-to-head -head comparison with this uh, FLX4 against the DDJ400. So keep an eye on the um, DJ Kit YouTube channel for that video. Actually, once it's done, I'll link it in the comments or the description of this one. Um, but yeah, it's it looks a lot more sort of rounded. Um, the jog wheels uh, are the same size as the 400. The only kind of difference is with the kind of color of the controller. Um, we saw this on the DDJ Rev 1, the orange um, color around the queue, um, uh, along the performance pad, sorry, and like the, the buttons and stuff. I think it was red on the DDJ 400. Um, but yeah, it was orange. Uh, it is orange on the Rev 1, should I say. But I mean, apart from that, it is pretty much a, a very similar layout. There are a few things in different places. Um, but of course, on this DDJ FLX4, there are these extra buttons down here, which are some of the brand new features. So real quick look at the controller itself. This is your load knob up here. These are your two load buttons where you load the tunes onto the two different channels. Then you've got your trim up here, three band EQ, high, mid, and low. Uh, and then this, uh, these two here are the filter knobs, but then we will go across here to see this smart CFX button. What the CFX stands for is color effects. So this is one of the brand new features on this uh, FLX4. It's called smart color effects. And basically this is what it does. So we all know what the filter knob does. That's your high pass filter that way. That's your low pass filter that way. But basically what these smart color effects do when you turn them on using this button, it's kind of like a combo of like the color effects that you would see on a DJM mixer combined with like the beat effects that you would also see on a uh, DJM mixer. So um, I'm gonna just run you through them real quick. Um, you So this one is called the Phantom Echo. So what that sounds like, it's basically like an echo with the filter. Um, like that. By the way, to change these effects on uh, within the record box software, you hold shift and you press the smart color effects button here. So that was the phantom echo. Now we've got reflect echo, which sounds like this. It's pretty wonky, quite like that one. So then next one is the Mobius echo. <laughs> We obviously saw the Mobius effect come in on the DDJ-1000 all those years ago. So um, yeah, Pioneer obviously standing by that one. Uh, next on the list, this is called Vaporize. So it literally vaporizes the tune, pretty uh, pretty aptly, uh, aptly named that one as well. Next one down, this is the Noise Chopper. Oh, I like that actually, that's like a pulsing. Nice, that's like a, it's like a noise color effect with like a trans beat effect. You know, it's like what I was saying earlier, you know, it's like combining the kind of two, which is what you would do in a live kind of mix once you get up from, once you progress from this Flex 4 up to like a DJM, like a live setting or a club mixer, you know, these are the kind of combos that you would be doing. Anyway, Cyberjet. Don't know when I would use that one, to be honest, unless I was on a spaceship. Now, this is the uh, the Cyber Pitch. Again, that one's pretty extreme. And then last but not least, this is called the Twister. That's really nice. It's like, um, it's like a, a vinyl break mixed with like a roll effect. So, 
yeah, those are the smart color effects. As you can see, I was changing them by holding shift and the smart color effects button, which was changing them within the record box software. Really, really cool effects to sort of know what kind of sound you would like to be using while you're mixing. Just to say as well, I mean, once I get down to, to this other new feature down the bottom here, you'll know what I'm talking about. But we saw this on the FLX6, when the FLX6 came out. These FLX controllers seem to be really heavily sort of aimed at like transitioning. So in terms of like moving from one tune to another, um, using effects or, you know, sort of doubling up different effects and stuff like that. Or like, I think that that is, it's a really good learning curve for like entry level DJs um, and, you know, being able to sort of know your sound and what effects you like and stuff. I think that that's a really, really powerful feature on this FLX4. So the other uh, brand new standout uh, feature in terms of mixing on this FLX4 is this smart fader. So let me just explain what it does and then I'll give you an example. What the smart fader does, you hit this button down here and it kind of helps you not only transition from channel one over to channel two, but it does it in a, in, in a way that's really, really good for like genre hopping um, in terms of like changing BPMs and stuff like that. So the song that I've got loaded on channel one over here, this is 118 BPM. The song that I've got loaded on channel two over here, that is 92 and a half BPM. Okay, so normally, sort of trying to mix from 118 over to 92 and a half, that would be kind of complicated. I mean, to be fair, it's always like the old echo beat effects and filter out, which uh, to be fair, the smart uh, color effects could probably do that for you. But anyway, what this smart fader does is it transitions from 118, it goes down to whatever, or up, let's say, um, to whatever BPM this uh, other channel is doing as you're moving the crossfader over, but it doesn't only change the BPM, it also takes out the, it changes the volume, obviously, which is what a crossfader does anyway, but it also takes out the low um, EQ of the song that it's transitioning from and turns up the low EQ on the song that you're transitioning to. All right, so I know that that sounds kind of complicated. It sounds like that's lots of stuff going on at once. So the best way for me to show you this, I'm gonna just do this smart fader, but only with one channel playing. So you'll be able to hear the transition of it changing BPM, the EQ uh, being cut, and then it does do a little cheeky echo when, when you get to the other side. So let me show you what that sounds like. Play the tune, turn the smart fader on. So now, as I'm moving the crossfader over, you can see the BPM is slowing down of the tune. Also, as you go past the middle point, you can hear there that the bass gets taken out of this channel, getting slower and slower and slower. And now it's at 92 and a half BPM. It did that little echo out, but it's the same BPM as this, as the song that's on this channel over here. The bass EQ has been taken out, so it is basically, it's mixed into this song over here. So let's do it again this time, um, and I will have this song playing, and you'll be able to hear what it sounds like when they mix into each other. So okay, let's go from 118 to 92 and a half. So I play my channel one here, I press Smart Fader, and then you need to drop this in time Otherwise, this won't sound good at all, right? So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now I've dropped that at the right time, move the crossfader over. As you can see, that's the channel two coming in. BPM's getting slower and slower, so it meets. And now we are over to the 92 and a half BPM on the second channel over here. So I know a lot of you might be thinking that, you know, this is sort of doing all of the mixing and stuff for you. As I quickly mentioned then, you do, to use this feature properly, you do need to know your phrasing 
Uh, what phrasing means is you need to know when to drop the tune at the right time. Otherwise, all the drum beats are going to be out. It's going to be dropping, uh, you know, like the drop of the channel two will be not at the right time of the end of the channel one or all that stuff. So it does take, you know, a little bit of sort of knowledge and DJ skill to be able to pull off this smart fader. And also, I mean, you know, you could say you don't need to use this smart fader. You've got to be thinking that this smart fader feature does four or five different things at the same time, which literally you have to be an octopus to be able to do all this stuff at the same time. So it's changing the tempo using the tempo sliders. It's moving the crossfader over. It's changing the tempo over that side. And it's changing both of the low um, EQ on both of the channels. So that's one, two, three, four, five. You know, you need five arms to be able to do that. So, you know, it's, it's a really, really good feature on this FLX4. But again, you know, with the sort of tuition and the sort of learning on these FLX controllers, once you know what kind of transition you, 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 what kind of way that you want to transition your tunes, you know, you can then take that smart fader off and you can try and uh, do it yourself. All right, now, so just some like general sort of bits on this FLX4. It's got eight performance pads down here, which are rubber. They are lit up by the orange, which I uh, mentioned before, which is the same as the Rev1. The performance modes for these pads are Hot Q, Pad Effects 1, Beat Jump, Sampler, and then the secondary pads, which you get by holding Shift, are Keyboard, Pad Effects 2, Beat Loop, and Key Shift. You've got your tempo faders down here. Uh, which is where you change the speed of the song. Um, and you've got your Q and your play buttons down here. Up here, this is your looping section, and then you've got your beat sync um, up here, which as you can see is flashing because I've just used it on, uh, sorry, when you turn the smart fader on, obviously it beat syncs automatically. Now coming back over to the mixer section, um, this is a standout on this FLX4. You didn't see this on the DDJ400. This is a dedicated microphone volume knob. So on the DDJ400, it was just that little sort of knob on the back next to the actual input. And speaking of the microphone, with this DDJ FLX4, this is something which we've been seeing on a lot of the other controllers. We saw it on the Rev1. Um, the microphone on this controller is routed through the USB into the software instead of just straight out of the master. So what that means is, when you're live streaming on this thing or when you're recording your mixes, it will pick up the microphone without having to use another computer or routing the microphone through another audio interface. So to turn on the microphone within the software in Rekordbox, you have to have the mixer uh, view turned on, which is up there. And then you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner, just above your collection, um, you've got mic on or mic off, which you click. When it's on, it turns blue. So going down here, this is where you've got your um, headphone um, cue or master uh, knob, and then you've got your headphone volume down here. Just to say the headphone input on this FLX4 is a 3.5, so it's the mini headphone input. Uh, and then jumping over here, we've got your master level here, which is obviously what comes out of the um, the controller itself. Just to say the master output, there is only one master output on this FLX4 and it is RCA. Um, and then under here, you've got your Q button, which, uh, which you press to listen to the master in the headphones over here. And then down here, you've got your beat effects, which, you know, this again, we see this with Pioneer DJ. This is where you would find the beat effects on their high-end DJM club standard mixers. So you learn on this, you know where the effects are, your muscle memory kicks in, you don't feel scared when you're using one of the big boy mixes in the club. Um, of course, on this, there is no built-in effects to this controller. These are all software effects, um, whether it be Rekordbox or Serato. But um, so you've got channel one there to send the beat effects to channel one, or channel two there to send it to channel two, or both of them at the same time. And then you've got effects select here. So look at all of those record box effects in here. So when you press it like that, it goes, it filters down for the effects. And then when you press shift, it goes upwards. So if you go past the effect that you wanted to use, then um, you press shift. Then down here, this is the size of the beat of the effect. So basically what it sounds like. 
Then you've got the BPM um, of the effect, auto or tap down there. And then this is how much of the effect is actually in the mix. And then finally, this little orange button down here that turns the beat effect on. So to conclude here then, the brand new Pioneer DJ DDJ FLX4. Who's it aimed at? This is aimed at beginner DJs, but also it is a cracking backup controller. Um, you know, the same could be said for the DDJ 400. I mean, this has replaced the DDJ 400, but remember how iconic the DDJ 400 became. Um, you know, it was one of the most popular, if not the most popular DJ controller that we have ever sold at DJ Kit. Um, particularly over lockdown, they became a little bit of like a sort of collector's item. I think everybody like wanted one. Um, and, um, you know, this is a really, really great replacement for it. It's not too far off, but it's got those really, really good added features. And, you know, those added features, as I said earlier, are great for sort of a learning curve in terms of DJing. Great to be able to jump from one genre to another. I mean, you know, it's worth saying as, as a DJ first starting out, if you've got this as your first DJ controller, you may not know exactly what kind of music that you want to play you know so if if you want to play hip-hop or house or you know like i've just done there i've jumped from house speed down to hip-hop speed you can do that using that smart fader feature um but also you know the most important thing about the dual compatibility with softwares on this flx range is if you don't like using this with record box give it a go with serato you know, if you don't like using it with Serato, this controller's not for you, mate, because it's one or the other. Having said that, I'm sure that we will see this being compatible with Algorithm and probably Virtual DJ at some point because they are pretty up on their MIDI mappings, but not at the time of launch. But just to say again, we are looking forward to seeing that updated Pioneer DJ app for iOS and Android, which this is going to be compatible with via Bluetooth or even hardwiring it in as well. So I'm going to leave it there, peeps. Let me know what you think of this brand new Pioneer DJ, DDJ FLX4. I mean, are these new effects, the smart color effects and the smart fader, are they effects that you think that you would use? Um, you know, even from not even an entry level, but as a kind of intermediate or professional level, would you sort of like to see them on any other controllers going forward from Pioneer DJ? Also, Bluetooth. Do you trust Bluetooth or would you prefer to hardwire this into your device? As always, send it to anyone who you think might find it helpful, maybe someone who is in the market for a brand new DJ controller or someone who's looking to get into DJing. Um, also remember to like the video and subscribe to the DJ Kit YouTube channel. There are plenty more videos like this one and there will be plenty more videos on this DDJ Flex 4 um, or FLX 4, should I say, going forward. So until next time, people, you take care out there. Peace.